because we're record recording. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm just going to pop you on speaker view, actually. That's better. <laughs> Great. So I guess beginning with the first and like simplest question, um, mm. why do you make paintings of interior spaces or what I perceive to be interior spaces? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, I kind of see them as they're sort of like split into like two categories for me. Um, one I think is contextual, which is I was looking a lot into like retro nostalgia and why it's kind of like grown in popularity. Um, and basically, it was it was because it, um, nostalgia sort of takes people away in, into like a place or a memory, and I thought like that's kind of what it's doing for me except from these are places I've sort of never really been to um and I sort of I thought that best resembled um that feeling of nostalgia of going to a place um so for me it kind of was basically just a summary of of you know this this feeling that I was getting from looking at all of these interiors um but also uh practically I was looking at like I wanted to do uh, sort of abstract paintings and I was looking into a lot of like expressionist painters um, and I just found it incredibly difficult. Um, but with, with these interiors, I sort of saw that they, their sort of layout was like an organization of shape and color. And I thought that was sort of like uh, an easy way to navigate around um, abstraction. Um, so the, the sort of work was already done for me, but I would just then have to figure out how to um, adapt it to the way I wanted to paint it. Um, so it, yeah, it just became about like editing out all the unnecessary parts and sort of rearranging it to, to how I see fit. So I think that's kind of, um, yeah, practically where, where the interior sort of helped me out um, to sort of like aid what I wanted to do. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. And where does that source imagery come from? Do you take, you know, kind of like, what are your starting points, I guess? Do you take from lots of different places and kind of yeah. construct it or? <laughs> I just take them um, from like social media pages and blogs and stuff like that. Um, in a way, I feel it's a little bit like taboo, um, maybe to say like, this is where my, my, my image resource comes from. But I also think it's actually, it's a way of researching. Um, you know, it, it kind of feels a bit wrong to be scrolling through, you know, Instagram and endless pages, but I think technically it is research. I mean, that, that's what I'm looking for. Um, I'm looking for things that are going to jump out at me and things that really like are visually appealing and um, sort of, I wouldn't say tick off like a criteria, but I have a sort of, I have set things that I want to achieve. And um, yeah, sort of having a look through, I guess it'd be like looking at books really. Um, but it's just, I think it's interesting because it's become so much more accessible, um, you know, uh, rather than sort of finding out all of these things and where to look for these images, they're just sort of already there for you, sort of already collated. Um, a lot of them are for like aesthetic, like retro uh, pages. So there's kind of like a whole mood board. Um, so in a sense, like I'm just sort of... Um, taking them and then and reusing them and I quite like that that's their function now is like they were sort of like a lookbook for interiors at the time um, but now I'm sort of they've resurfaced and I'm reusing them as something different um, as like a as a as a motive for a painting which is um so it kind of works out you know <laughs> I actually added another question in here sorry to, to chuck okay. you in it um, <laughs> I was only, it was only, why do you call your paintings ruminations in this scene? Oh, okay. Where did that come from? Um, I think it was just, <laughs> basically, um, I think to ruminate is to have a deep thought about something. And it was obviously sort of the way of it's a room. So I just thought, like, put, put two and two together for a title. And they could all sort of, like, they could all work as one title, but with just separate, you know. So that just seemed to be the easiest and I guess maybe like self-humorous titles that I could come up with. I don't know if they're that funny, but yeah, that, that just seemed to like, it just seemed to work in my mind. So I think that's brilliant. <laughs> I, I love a bit of wordplay. I'm all for it. I'm, I'm really glad that we find it. So stupid. At the time I was like, this is the one, this is it. <laughs> 
<laughs> I know what you mean though, because I do that. I play, I try and play around with words all the time. Mm. And yeah. it's sometimes a struggle and sometimes it comes really quickly. And then yeah. other times you kind of, it does. And then you think, yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, is that? Yeah. Silly? <laughs> but no, I think it's really good. But how do space and time, which are kind of the themes of the exhibition, um, mm. manifest themselves in your work? Um, so yeah I sort of touched on space a little bit is um, how you know I want people to enter into this space with me and sort of enter into a space like back in time um, but certainly uh, time itself like I think um, I quite like the absence of humans in them I think it's sort of the fact that they're empty it sort of reflects on a time past almost like an abandoned building or something, except for people could still very well be living in, in these places. I um, I don't know too much about them. You know, I sort of researched the, 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 the designers and everything, but I quite like the fact that they're just sort of, sort of empty. I'm really sort of really interested in, in design with paint as well. Um, I, I quite like the two combined, but I also think some of them are quite obviously uh, from, from the past um and if if people can see a sort of um like a glass like a glass wall or something um if that can bring up like a memory or like oh i remember that you know i remember that and how out of fashion it is now and or how it could come back into fashion i don't know but i quite like that um that design sort of reflects that time period as well so i think that they're all sort of working together to sort of create an effect you know yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I like the fact that there aren't any people in them as well. And they've got this kind of almost, um, like you say, sort of slightly abstract is slightly almost surreal quality to them mm, that, yeah. that kind of comes from that empty, those kind of clean, empty, um, yeah, kind of yeah. very uh, linear spaces. Mm. Uh, the next question is slightly different, um, changing tax a bit, um, but I'm always interested to know, and we touched on this before we started recording, has COVID affected your work at mm. all in terms of either the way you work or what's in your work? Um, yeah. yeah, has anything sort of sort of changed for you? I think, um, yeah, definitely, definitely practically. Um, I'm lucky enough that I could work in my bedroom not much of a space, um, but I'm, at least I was able to. Um, however, it definitely, um, I think it's quite idealistic, the fact that you can just roll over and there's your studio. Um, actually, that's not the case at all. It's, <laughs> it's quite, um, you're constantly faced with like, okay, here's this painting, and if I'm not working on it, then I'm doing something wrong, or I'm, I'm not. You know, I'm not being productive, I'm being like counterproductive and it's like the fact that it's just always there in front of you it's kind of just sort of like looming and just being like you need to paint you need to, or you don't really catch a break from it um, so yeah it was that was kind of um, yeah it was kind of actually got a bit too intense at, at the end where I was like okay I just I need a, like a studio um, to have a break from it you know from time in time out um, it actually also got me thinking about um, escapism, um, <laughs> the fact that perhaps maybe um, these these works uh, during this time could be about maybe escaping to another place for a brief moment. Um, like whilst I'm doing it, it's like you're sort of already transported into this mindset. Um, but I thought about perhaps these could right now resemble um, like a, a a period of me escaping to somewhere different just for a moment and then sort of coming back <laughs> when it's over <laughs> which would be fantastic if I could do that but it's just they just sort of I think um, you know you just start heavily thinking about things and I think it was just something that maybe propped up in my mind um, about how relevant it was today perhaps um, so yeah that was like my thoughts while doing it <laughs> Yeah, I was I was most intrigued to hear what you had to say about that in a way, just because for <laughs> yeah. me, you know, your work's being about interiors and about spaces. And I think that, mm. you know, so much of what we have experienced in, in the past year has been about mm. feeling, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, yeah, almost closing our space and finding a way out of that. Um, mm. and, and I think yeah. it's interesting that your way of thinking is kind of, you know, you're almost kind of getting lost in another space, a different space. Mm. 
yeah, yeah exactly yeah that's quite that is really really interesting mm, yeah and um i guess that kind of leads me on well sort of leads me on to the next question which is what is your favorite painting of your yeah. own in the exhibition i think um uh it would have to be interior too um so uh the one with the sort of bath area i um <laughs> I lost my mind on that painting. I, <laughs> so uh, I was trying to mix a blue. Um, I spent probably about an hour, maybe two hours, just mixing a blue. I had a whole palette filled with different blues. And no matter what I did, it just didn't work. I couldn't mix the right blue. And I was losing my mind and everyone was just laughing at me because I was just frantically like... Um, I came in the next day and... I just I just mixed it, put it on, and I took all the tape off, and it turns out it was just fine. Like all I all I needed was to take the tape off. <laughs> it was actually fine. I just overthought it. Um, but I think aesthetically, I quite I quite like that one. I think it's quite calming. Um, it was also a sort of a step into um, like a different path away from the first one that I did. So interior one was quite. It was based a lot on sort of collage and um, um, having like an interplay between room and like a non space. So it was kind of like a non mimetic space of just shapes. Um, with, but the, the second one I did that sort of started the transition into actually painting like a, a, a recognizable interior. Um, so that's kind of actually what started off the whole process from being like actually even though I did want to paint things a little bit more you know um, sort of more abstract and less recognizable I think it actually sort of worked the way I didn't intend it to and that that sparked off all the other ones that came after that so three and four came from that experimentation and having it just sort of work out like that um, so I think I think that one's my favorite um, I think the colour scheme and, and I think practically I struggled a lot with this. <laughs> I love them all but I think my favourite is actually interior four. I think I really like the way you painted those spheres. There's, I think <clears> that's <throat> just so nice and the way that kind of juxtaposes with the more kind of linear, um, you know, shapes within within the piece is quite clever and I love that little lampshade that's just like, <laughs> the little, know, the like little tilt. Yeah. so orderly and then it's just like, I think it's yeah. very quirky. Thank you. I um yeah, I think this sort of collage esque sort of style from the first. They they sort of <laughs> they sort of went through journeys, <laughs> but to figure one thing out and, and then go to it and then it, it's sort of it's weird how painting just sort of suggests itself to you. Um, like you could just do it and something will pop up and then you just decide to roll with it. And I think yeah, that one just sort of worked. And um, I think I just really wanted to sort of play a bit more on realism and and to have the figure in there it sort of has a sort of reflection on on the viewer sort of looking at the space and i thought that was pretty cool to have something oh, looking yeah. back at there you is a yeah figure in that one isn't there yeah, yeah so yeah. they're in they're in the two top just um, like bottom yes, corners it's, that's like just cool. a, some little legs <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but i thought it was in, in the image reference it was pretty i couldn't quite make it out if it was a person or not um, it just sort of looked like a figure-esque person or a shape, but I thought, you know, uh, it's one of those things that you just, again, sort of roll with, and I thought, actually, it'd be quite interesting to to bring the audience into the painting mm. um, and have them sort of staring back at themselves whilst they stare back into a, a painting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see what you mean, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think that's, oh, no, we are still got... Uh, Oh yeah, so I was going to ask you, how did doing the MA at Bar Spa like help your practice, help you to shape your mm. practice? Like, what was your what was your experience like? I guess um, <laughs> the MA. Oh god, the MA was fantastic. Um, it was the best decision I, I ever made to do. Um, so I I did my BA and uh, in Southampton, I was basically I was just drawing, um, and I had dabbled with paint, but not really. Um, I did paintings here and there, they weren't really too great. Um, so I just stuck with drawing and I was just, I was really into this sort of, um, I was looking at a lot of older paintings, painters, and sort of trying to, to get skillfully good at drawing. 
um, and I came on the MA and it, it sort of really, it I would say it enhanced like aesthetics that I didn't know I had, <laughs> that I didn't know that I was interested in. Um, so if you were to tell me um, you would paint interiors by the end of it, I would have said that you're wrong <laughs> because I was so set on like drawing and learning how to paint, how, um, how it's traditionally done. Um, but honestly, it was such a push and pull. You sort of go in one direction and that doesn't work. So you go in another and the tutors are fantastic. Like I really, I really do owe a lot to the tutors because they were, they were so great in sort of just guiding you, not, not sort of telling you what to do, just sort of guiding you about, okay, look at this person, uh, read this, you know, uh, this might not work. Um, so at times it could be intensely stressful um, where you have a deadline and you're like, oh, I, I haven't done anything. Like I, I thought I had this thing and it's not worked. Um, and now it's like, now I've got nothing. Um, and then you sort of really have to like wean out works and like really try hard to like find it. Um, but I, I sort of arrived at all of those points literally at the very last second. Um, and I guess, yeah, it just, it was like the accumulation of all the research I'd done beforehand that just sort of fell into place at the last minute. And it was just kind of one of those moments where it's like, oh, okay, all right, yeah, let's let's roll with this. And um, But also, you know, um, meeting the other guys on the MA as well, um, like Marco and Afu, uh, Daniela as well, but they're all so intensely knowledgeable. Um, I find myself sort of like prodding Marco or, or Afu and be like, how do I mix this color? <laughs> like what's going wrong like I, I can't figure it out and um we, we actually all got really close so it was you know we'd always have open discussions about the work and it wouldn't be judgmental it would be quite honest but you know it was um I did learn a lot from them as well so um yeah it was it was definitely um an incredible experience and um I'm so glad I actually decided to sort of change you know take a step out of the comfort zone and sort of and and, and change because you have no idea what's going to happen um <laughs> you have to fail a lot <laughs> um yeah. yeah it's like a lot of failing until you get to the right point um Totally and that, that's yeah. exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. But I think you're right. I think the thing that is so valuable about being part of a course like that is is the mm. people, the people around you all the time Absolutely. and having that supportive yeah. kind of creative community of people. Mm. Um, and that's so much more challenging to to achieve and maintain after mm. you've kind of finished uni, isn't it? Yeah, you've absolutely. You've got to work a lot harder from it, like for it, because mm. you're not in this like the same space with people all the time mm, yeah yeah absolutely it's um yeah I, I so uh in a in an interview with uh michael simpson he sort of he, who i usually admire um he basically says like university is kind of like a false playground you know you get you get a studio space you're in amongst all of these people and then once you go out you're you're into the the real world like the big bad world and you have a studio space on your own and you have to make those decisions you know on your own and it can be quite terrifying um and that was actually kind of the case in lockdown um mm -hmm. you sort of uh, i am on you know you are on your own you don't have that studio space and it's it was such a sudden change from having being surrounded by so many people and then just to being on your own but um, I still find myself um, calling Marco up sometimes and just being like, help. That's really good. Help That's me. really good that you just like maintained those friendships. And, we have. And, yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Still yeah, keep in contact. But um, yeah. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's good to have them. Good to have them around, you know, just yeah. as moral support and good friends. Thank you so much, Mark. It's been great talking to you. Okay. All right. Have a good day. You too. Have a good one. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye, <laughs> bye-bye.